Evening everybody. This set is one of several sets that I bought back in quite a horde of them uh, a couple of months back from the Henley Gathering. And like most of the sets, they've been waiting in the to do pile. And uh, what I've been trying to do now, although I wasn't going to do this, but for future reference, if you like, and nostalgia, I suppose. I intend to record all the sets, either like now on video or maybe just in stills, before I actually use them. And even though some of these older sets are in really good nick, I will get round to using them eventually. This one has got a little bit of, a little bit more nostalgia for me, personally, but I'll come on to that later. But that bit of nostalgia has given me another bit of a spark to build something which is always good I remember when I was a kid if you weren't in the mood it was quite difficult to get on with it but uh, fortunately and I hope uh, that's not going to change now in the last two or three years that spark has been pretty continuous using Meccano for varying things from set models to own builds to using them with model steam engines but anyway this set uh, we'll find out as we go, because I say I've only had a quick peek inside and I've only had a look at the top uh, tray, there being two trays. As you can see, Meccano Mountain Engineers set. Now as far as I can recall, and I'm no expert and I've had to do a bit of research myself on these, this period may not be the only themed sets at that time or up to that time there were the mechanised army sets pre-war um, and the you might say specialised sets with the uh, car constructor and the aeroplane constructor sets but I don't suppose you could call them themed this uh, themed idea came about after Lions Brothers or you probably know them better as Triang amongst other brands that they owned bought Meccano out in 1964. I suppose there are many and varied reasons why Meccano went bust then but one of them certainly is that Meccano was nowhere near as popular as it had been in the 50s and in the 1920s and 30s which is arguably the golden period even though it was very expensive. Now this set will work it out exactly but seems to, uh, I'll say exactly, as near as damn it we'll say, this set seems to be about 1966, perhaps no earlier than that. Now, because Meccano wasn't as popular, perhaps the models are a bit dated, and you could argue they are dated now, I suppose, but maybe the, even these models are a little bit dated at the time. Um, they changed the colour schemes. Initially, as you can see here, yellow and black being the main colours, I suppose. But the strips and angle girders being a silver colour. Initially, silver painted. That paint wasn't very good. And I do have some lying around. Um, some better than others. It's sort of a dull, you might say satin finish at best like aluminium in a way um, but it is easily damaged and it wasn't that long before they stopped doing that and went to zinc so enough waffle let's have a look in the box now the box itself is in pretty decent nick again it's not mint but it's, it's probably one of the best ones I've ever seen or indeed had in my possession so we lift the lid, it's quite a compact box really because of the two tray system if you look at the next set down which we'll get to eventually, the six you will see that that's quite large but it's only one tray at this time nothing on the inside for this one and if you notice no guarantee slip anymore which makes dating a little bit more awkward you might say so here we are we've got the uh, then I suppose newfangled polystyrene trays but before we get to them we've got the manuals 
as I said I have lifted the lid on this one but that's as far as I got really I have moved the manuals we'll start at the beginning if you like we have a naught and one set manual of the period and it will have a date code on and here we see it here you may not be able to pick it out but it's December 1964-1264 now of course there would be many many possibly thousands I suppose instruction books printed and they didn't change very often when I've been researching um, sets and parts and liveries uh, and different uh, alterations to say a common part this is not exact but I get the feel that perhaps manuals changed sometimes in only a slight way perhaps every eight to ten years it seems that's really a guesstimate so don't take that as gospel because what you'll find is that in this series um, or revamped series the set parts for most of the sets are exactly the same as the previous um, series um, up to 1964 from sort of 58 okay the colours are changed but the essential basic parts contents are the same not every set though it seems again I'm not an expert on the uh, ins and outs of all the details and uh, the web is certainly um, can be your friend because it can be an enemy there you can uh, drop a clangor occasionally because um, like me I'm not doing it as an expert at all now here we have the uh, 4, 5 and 6 manual but the date code on here is January 1966 so we have to assume a little bit of course as I've probably said before in other videos we assume that what we have is what originally came with a set sometimes there are some point pointers to suggest that that might not be the case like the recent video of the so called 1961 number 4 outfit where parts may have been added in just to make the set up a reasonable effort to do that it was and as you'll see soon I have created something with it from the set using the instruction book here we have the 7 and 8 manual which is slightly less good condition as the 4, 5 and 6 manual but um, it is heavier and the uh, pages tend to pull through the, uh, the, the um, and in fact they are doing it a little bit here the staples at the end let's see what the date code is on this one so we've got January 67 now looking at this one it may have been used a little bit but of course we don't know whether they are original you might say that a set that's been looked after this much stands a good chance that they are the original ones so so far the date of January 1967 is about right give or take here we have a parts list it looks like it hasn't been open many times and I won't open it flat um, and it says on the top this replaces lists appearing in all the current manuals and this is dated November 1967 so again if we assume that is what came with the set we're already at nearly 1968 what else can date it? well the finish as I previously said the uh, strips, girders double bent strips, double angle brackets, that sort of thing were painted in an aluminium style paint I don't think it was, was aluminium but I can assure you that these are zinc now the shine off the zinc will probably play around with the aperture on the camera and make it seem a little bit dark surroundings but I can assure you that that is zinc and decent zinc and looking at it uh, we've got an array of parts um, 
quite a vast array and looking at it may be that some parts have been removed but it doesn't look an awful lot like it's been used at all at least the top tray now what I've started doing which I didn't really want to do with these videos I have started to make basic notes um, trying to make it a bit more flowing for you and hopefully shorter doesn't always happen so I apologize if I go on a bit which let's be honest I normally do we have some information it's a bit sketchy for this period uh, I don't know why really um, perhaps this period is not the uh, period of choice for the collectors out there and the experts um, I can see that I suppose for me it's sort of the colour that I go for or colours that I go for because even though it was old when I had it 30 odd years ago it's sort of the colours that I had when I was a kid and I've said this before I think you sort of gel generally with the colours that you had when you were a kid um, you've only got to look at the Meccano scene at the clubs and societies now you would say that the most popular colour is still red and green so late 50s early 60s or up to this period about 1964 so one of the colour differences with the parts that we can narrow down the date Again, if we assume that everything is original with the set as it was put together at the factory at Liverpool, is the colour of certain parts, apart from the basic, in this case, zinc, yellow and black. One of these is the road wheels. And these are the road wheels. Now, I don't mind these road wheels for light models, but they do tend to crack with use if you've got heavy models and you play with them and in my book even at my age why not have a play with them you've built it enjoy it I said this before um, I think it was the last um, set review with the number 4 1961 set they tend to crack um, and back when you know, I'm talking 30 years ago we certainly never had any suitable glue then whether there was something around there maybe araldite I suppose but we used to get the soldering irons on the back of the wheels to stop them cracking too much just to melt them again but it's sort of a last resort really before scrapping them before just salvaging the uh, bosses for future use I've still got plenty of those wheels like that and not all of them have been mine and it's obviously a, was a common repair but most of mine have the black outers the tyres if you like with the red inners now these as you can see are grey and red and that change to black happened in 69 so going on that parts list so far we've managed to narrow down the date from November 1967 to sometime in 1969 there are other pointers uh, for that and when we get to the next tray we'll have a look for those um, one of the uh, pointers is the colour of the cord if we can find that maybe that will narrow it down even more so when you do get a set as I say you have to assume a few things and you, you may not ever be certain that it's all what came with the set originally I mean how are you going to prove that unless it is sealed um, you can narrow it down so we already know from the design of the box well personally I know um, this box was before the change to the blue boxes in 1970 if I remember correctly so we can already narrow this down from the zinc plating and a few pointers like the the colour of these road wheels that we can narrow it down from around about 66 to no later than about 1968 um, maybe 69 Let's have a look at the bottom tray. Be careful with this polystyrene. I don't want to break it. It's in very good condition and of course it does make a mess. And we found the cord and would you believe it, the bottom tray is still sealed. That is very nice and I know people will say, oh don't, don't open it. But I am, not today, but I will do. So, now we can see the cord. And a few other things that point the way of the date as this is still sealed we've got the grey one inch road tyres 
which matches the grey outer on the larger road wheels in the first tray. Now, the cord as I mentioned changed colour. Apparently the cord changed from light green, as we've got here, to blue around 1968-69. So, with the information we've already got, we have now sort of narrowed it down to around 67 to 68, possibly into 69. As I say, the exact details of changes over this period are very sketchy indeed. But as you can see, we've still got, you may not be able to see this with the shine, but there you should be able to see we're still all sealed. So, very nice set. Um, you get loads of parts in the set. Unfortunately, the box doesn't tell you exactly how many parts in the set, but uh, it says you can build 120 models, and that's just from the set. We do have another pointer regarding it being slightly later, if you like, in the series. And um, I've got no fixed dates, but certainly the plastic small parts boxes being all plastic with clear plastic tops as opposed to the very short-lived apparently um, red cardboard boxes with the see-through plastic windows um, again puts it a little bit later so I think we can uh, things point to with that parts list sort of very late 1967 to probably early 69 and a very nice set it is indeed. I wonder what it would have been like um, before the modern times of today where when you get a present you're not, I don't think people are so much in awe and wonder and excitement of open, opening such a simple toy, and this probably isn't that simple I suppose, and getting so much excitement and joy out of it, just opening it, you know, leading up to Christmas or a birthday, opening the presents. Um, I've often thought this about Hornby Dublo. When you look at the old Meccano magazines when Hornby Dublo was introduced in 1938, the absolute excitement of something that small, mass produced, and okay, they weren't cheap, but I wonder what that felt like, you know. Um, I've had some of that being of around for 40 odd years now but I think today it takes so much more to get that excitement because things have just moved on in a technological way I suppose but a Meccano set is as only restricted by your imagination really and of course if you've got more stuff uh, your imagination can really fly given time because it does take some time to build some models I mean, even the more modern multi-model sets on average they seem to take me around two hours and some are five hours. But um, but you can make simple stuff, you don't have to. Of course, the beauty of this set is you can make everything from the naught set to the 7 set, hence why we've got all the manuals. That changed many years ago now. Um, different world now. But uh, a nice set, as you can see. And I think just for devilment, we'll see if there's anything underneath this tray. I'm trying to be a bit careful because there's no like recesses like there is in the uh, top tray to get the second one. And no, and I know it's out of shot. I look under, underneath this tray now. I suppose the benefit of this being sealed, I can lift it up so you can get a better look at all the parts. I know one thing I should have done when I bought the last video camera. I should have bought one with a wider angle. You wouldn't believe how far I have to get away from some things. But there you go. There's the uh, bottom tray. In all its glory. I wonder how good the drive bands are. There's one or two in there. And a couple in there. But very nice. I can't see any cracking in the wheels. But uh, we'll see on that. A very nice set. Now. Price-wise, how much do you think? As you can see, there's an awful lot of parts in this set. And uh, I will sort of do the standard costs now with the dealer based on the basic standard screws 
and nuts in the main. I should say standard bolts, I suppose. Um, it doesn't seem right to say screws. Well, I suppose they are screws. Anyway, it is not impossible for me to give you an accurate value of a set like this today. It is not mint, it's near enough, it's partly sealed. It's pretty damn good, it's about as good as your most sets are likely to be these days. Of course there are better sets around, some in really silly prices, and some you can get good prices and bargains. Now, as I said earlier, this set was one of several. It was not quite a full Land Rover 90s worth of sets, but there was a fair amount in the back. I paid a fair watch of cash for all those sets. So how do I give you a reasonable idea of price? Well, that's difficult. There's a couple of reasons for that. eBay is one, of course. It's probably the most popular way of getting second-hand stuff these days. And as good as this is, it is still second-hand, at least second-hand. It may be more, it may be umpteenth hand. Who knows? I think it's safe to say it's never been used apart from a couple of parts being moved from the top tray. It's very nice, and I can assure you it will get used. But price-wise, well, the average of all the sets was just a shade under £60. Now, some of those sets are a few parts missing, but uh, average or slightly better than average condition. The boxes do vary from one or two pretty poor to like this, which is very, very good indeed. Um, so it's hard to give you a value Parts-wise, the price is, well, totally uneconomic really, especially in good condition, and original. Um, of course, you don't have to have really good condition to enjoy it, of course. But you do need, if you're making a set model, all the set parts. Anyway, if I remember correctly, we're looking at about 150 quid for this set. Um, there was a dearer set. And the number sixes in this period, or around this period, were about, one was about 100 I think, or 120. So I was saying, because it was a job lot, it's a little bit difficult for me to put an exact figure on those sets, because once the, the deal was done, and you know, I actually paid a little bit less, as you can expect, when somebody puts somebody up for sale, you have a look and you barter a little bit. It's a very good buy all in, I think. Um, and I'll be honest, I was lucky. One of the reasons I was lucky, and perhaps one of the reasons why this might seem very cheap at 150 is that these colours are not very popular at all at the moment. Um, of course, in good condition, most things are more popular, but in general, it is quite uh, an unpopular colour scheme. There are arguably nicer colour schemes, um, depending probably on your age, as I've said before, but certainly the dark blue and yellow is a very nice colour. Uh, I don't mind this colour at all. I probably do prefer the blue uh, to the flange plates, like there. But, just to give you an idea, I reckon on eBay, on a good day, and perhaps we are coming up to Christmases, uh, do, for some things, very things, but as I say, these colours, these colours don't seem very popular, so you're going to knock a bit off that, and it is an auction, and you can get two bidders going for it. And likewise, you can get nobody going for anything. But in around 1964 to 1966, this set was £6.15.6. Uh, I don't know how that really equates to today, without having a good think about it. Uh, but I would think a good price for this set on eBay with perhaps a little bit of interest to push the price a little bit and I think you would be looking at 200 it is a very much a guesstimate it is an auction it's not sealed but it's had very little use by the looks of it if you can get a set like this 450 in this condition it's a very good buy 
the usual, or what seems to be coming the usual guideline for some parts, i.e. standard bolts and nuts. Now this set, according to the price list that I've shown you, has standard nuts at 202, standard bolts 186. That comes to very roughly about 22 quid uh, or so in new from a dealer. If you had to go out and buy sets to get the equivalent Allen bolts and the easy start nuts of today, you would be looking at a fair few quid more than that. The reason why I say that, although it's probably easier for nuts and bolts, I've just had to go out and buy some sets to get some parts because I just couldn't get any parts reasonably quickly from my usual good supplier. Just because they weren't available, everybody else has had them. Now, it's Sod's Law, I suppose, the parts you want nobody's got, and of course you could buy them off eBay, but you might have to buy some one day and then you need some more. But I needed a lot of parts, or a lot of certain parts, so I had to end up going buy some sets. Um, and it was a success, but it was at vast expense, well, reasonably vast expense. You're looking at, I actually had to, I spent about 230 quid on sets. Now, I was lucky enough I had the spare cash, you know, this is not a brag, I had the spare cash, I got an idea in mind and the idea was successful and you'll be seeing that shortly, or the story so far I should say on that one. So, when you do buy these parts, whichever way you buy them, if you have to buy sets, it's not all bad because I've got a load more nuts and bolts now for the future. And other parts, plenty of narrow strips, for example, uh, in varying lengths, of course. Mostly slightly on the shorter size, say five or six old, but it, it has as its benefits elsewhere. And I did need specific parts which made things more difficult. And it's probably always the way that you need certain parts that you haven't got. It's Sod's Law, I suppose. And they do say, if you haven't heard me say this or anybody else or read it on the internet... You never have enough Meccano, and it's so true. Because when you think of an idea, oh, I could do with that, oh, I ain't got any. Or you haven't got enough. So, be careful out there when you buy stuff. I've said this before. Some real scrap out there, and people want the earth for. Be careful. I've put the lid on to show you something, and it's one of the reasons why I've gone for this set now. It was also one of the reasons why I went and built something with that uh, number 4 set you saw recently. That is nearly finished. As soon as that's finished I will start on this one. Now those of you who are regular visitors, although I haven't done a steam video for quite some time now due to my, uh, shall we say, falling out of love with the hobby uh, in a way. Not totally, but certainly dented it a little bit. I like to drive Meccano models, whether they're set or own builds, with steam engines, toy steam engines uh, in my case really, and that's one thing, I haven't really built anything um, the last ooh, probably seven or eight months that's new, either a set or my own creation model, for that a steam engine to drive. Um, so it's getting a bit barren on that because I don't like to, and I've probably said it before, I don't like to take the same things. Now there is the hay baler, which I haven't done a video on yet, but there is some text on the web somewhere about it, which I've got to tweak to make it reliable under steam power and easier for what are relatively small steam engines to drive. But let me take you back something like about 30 years ago, maybe a little bit more. And... Much of the Meccano that I still had before I started collecting more sets and parts um, we had back then. Um, it was predominantly yellow and zinc with all sorts thrown in from army multi-kits, a bit of highway multi-kit I think, uh, some green, some red, a lot of it repainted, not much of it in pretty good condition, but still enjoyed it. But in this case it wasn't me that enjoyed the build, it was me dad. 
Now I'm going back now to sort of early to mid 80s probably and the model that my dad built out of what was then a 1970s number 8 i.e. a 60s number 7 was this cable car here or a variant of it. The Meccano that we had was not a complete set, it was made out up of second hand parts, a few sets certainly as I'm sure some of you will understand number threes from perhaps this period, perhaps a little bit before um, and some of it was bought in quite poor condition never actually went through it to see what set we had got in complete I dare say a number six maybe even several number sixes but not maybe for definite I couldn't really say there was a fair amount though so what my dad did we had uh, we had several manuals I think we still, I've still got it somewhere uh, a number 8 manual from the 70s i.e. 60s number 7 and the cable cars you can see there now there were some variations on it because we just hadn't got all the parts to do it exactly as the book but it was made and it did work, it worked very well, it's quite an impressive structure it was together for some time and as you can see there on the right of the picture there's the clockwork motor, the number one and uh, still got the motor that my dad bought probably before I was around and it's in use, I don't know what it's doing at the moment but it will be in use again, at least in part because I intend to create this model again from this set and use the clockwork motor but also adapt it for steam power how much adaption I'll need I don't know I'll start with a set model when I do these things some things are obvious like you might have to replace spring clips and fit collars to make it a bit more reliable that sort of thing but the intention is to build the cable car from this set and to run it both with clockwork power and steam the steam will be a bit more uh, longer running because I can remember that under the clockwork power the car went up and I think back a little bit or down and up a little bit just one trip up and a little bit down or one trip down and a little bit up it wasn't uh, brilliant but a, a nice speed though not too fast not too slow but uh, it was a a nice model and it was uh, it's that nostalgia I didn't build it so I'm going to build it there you are folks uh, the number 7 set Mountain Engineers themed set from around 67 to perhaps early 1969 it seems and um, I, I will say I was lucky to get a set for such a decent price in this condition